Hey guys, and welcome to a video on BDO's newest piece of content, the Blood Altar, or the Altar of Blood. So, the Altar of Blood was added today, the 10th of July, and it is a brand new three-person cooperative activity where you and two others go off in a party and fight wave after wave of monster attempting to destroy a crystal in the middle of a room. At the end of several waves of monsters, you will fight a boss, and once you kill that boss, you can either proceed to the next wave or stop the challenge. There's a variety of pretty cool rewards, a bunch of events going on right now, and it's a pretty sweet piece of, well, brand new activity. So I'm not gonna be explaining all the best tactics or optimal strategies. I'll leave that to pe for people to discover in the upcoming weeks and for the Koreans who have already been able to play this for a while to sort of divulge. But I'm gonna be talking about how to unlock the Altar of Blood and also some of the basic things you should be doing in preparation for entering the Altar of Blood for the first time or for the events. So the Altar of Blood is unlocked by doing a fairly simple, if somewhat tedious quest that starts from the Black Spirit. If you open the Black Spirit up and go to quests and then suggested, there will be a quest from Yaz. Now you have to go visit Yaz because she has found something in Caprice's journal. Uh, Yaz is unfortunately, along with Alwyn, camped out in the southwestern part of Caltheon, past Lake Kaya high in the mountains in a really annoying place to get to. Ride all the way up there, and Yaz will tell you about the discovery they found in Kafra's journal, and that they need a brand new stone. Now, unfortunately, this stone is currently, there's only one in the world, and it's currently being held by their partner, Aiden, which would be great if Aiden was not currently in the southwestern part of Medea at the Hazra Ruins. So you get sent off to Aiden, and Aiden decides not to give you the stone. However, he will give you the stone if you complete a quest for him and prove yourself worthy, and he's just going to lend it to you in order for you to use for a while. Now, here you have two options. You can either do the quest, which I recommend because you only have to kill 300 of the ancient weapons in Hazard Ruins. Pretty simple, and you get 26 of the pure black stones, which allow you to upgrade uh, boss armor or weapons from plus 13 to plus 15. It's a really nice thing, saves you quite a bit of money, and uh, you also get a decent amount of experience and a few other things from the quest. Now, if you don't want to do this quest, you can simply circle back behind Aiden and pickpocket him. Use F6 to steal and take the stone that way. Either way you do it, uh, take the stone back to Yaz, and Yaz will celebrate and talk about Kafra's journal and the discovery they made, and then ride off. Alwyn will sigh, tell you that they should follow, and ride off. You have to follow them a little bit more, uh, even further southwest, I believe, to the actual Altar of Blood location. You don't need to actually be here in order to participate in the Altar of Blood, you can just queue up. But this is the location, and here Alwyn will tell you that Yaz has gone ahead, and you complete the quest. You get to choose between one of two little gemstones, uh, little shards. Uh, one is worth like 55 million, the other worth 85 million, currently on NA, not sure about other servers. I just chose the one that was worth more. And then you are done the quest and can now participate in the Altar of Blood. Now, the Altar of Blood is fairly simple, but it's unique in that unlike previous wave defense uh, events and activities we've had before, such as the Savage Rift, Altar of Blood uses your character's skills and gear. So instead of using matchlocks like in Savage Rift or any other ways they could have done it, you are actually using your level 56 to 60, you know, 65 character if you're that one person and the gear you've acquired and the skills you've acquired in order to fight off wave after wave along with your two partners. Now because of this, I would not recommend entering the Altar of Blood if you are below 500 gear score. Um, you might be able to do the first wave at 480 gear score if you're really lucky or if you have strong teammates that can carry you, but second wave and onwards, are going. you're probably going to be a burden if you're below 500 gear score. It's unfortunate that's how it is, uh, but there are ways you can contribute that do not involve combat. So when you enter the Altar of Blood, you queue up or you just enter with a party of three. The party leader to start the Altar of Blood event has to pay 100 energy to begin the waves. Now this 100 energy, only the party leader has to pay it, the other two in the party do not. Then in order to start each wave, there are up to 10 waves, um, well 10 sets of waves, so 10 rounds really. You have to pay 20 energy to start a brand new round. At the end of each round, a boss will come out. So if you are lower level or lesser geared, it's considered polite for you to ask a party leader and pay the energy cost so that the rest of the party that is carrying you 
uh, doesn't have to contribute as much while they're already providing the gear and the firepower. Now, as for strategies and tactics, these strategies are fairly simple. One, you want to defend the stone in the, in the center. If that stone dies, you lose, the Ultra Blood Challenge ends, and whichever wave you completed last is the wave you will have completed for that run. Uh, the 100 energy will not be refunded, and you will be forced to pay it again if you want to start a second run. So defending the, the stone in the center is your priority, and in order to do this, uh, there's a few simple tricks. The targeting priority should be anything attacking the stone immediately, followed by anything ranged. And if there's a choice between ranged and melee attacking the stone, unless there's like a huge cluster of melee attacking the stone, kill the ranged things first, then kill the melee. After taking care of anything attacking the stone and anything ranged, then move on to any melees that have not yet reached the stone, and simply clear things until the wave is done. Wait for the next wave, kill those. Till the end of the round when a boss appears. The end of boss for, for round one is Giath, and there's a bunch of different bosses that you will recognize as you proceed through the different illusions and different levels of the Altar of Blood. The second thing is that witches and wizards are pretty high demand, or emergency kits, as you cannot be resurrected in the Altar of Blood until a round has ended. If you die during a round, you are dead until that round is over, or until you get revived by a wizard or an emergency kit. So, Witches and wizards, uh, make sure you know your revive skill, have it on your hotbar somewhere. For everyone else, uh, if you don't have emergency kits, well, try not to die, bring tons of potions. Set up your fairy beforehand, there are reports that fairies don't work in the altar of blood, but some people say that if you just set it up before you enter the altar, then it will work just fine while you're in there. Now, finally, um, this is a big part, well, try to have fun. This is actually a really fun new activity. It's pretty fast paced, it's easy to do. Uh, you do have gear score requirements. Honestly, below 530 gear score, like I said 500 earlier, but 530 is really where you want to be to be comfortably have a party that can clear several waves and several levels of the Ultra of Blood. The bonuses and rewards are pretty nice. Um, there are some really high level rewards, like you can actually get, I believe it's pen boss gear from this, but the odds of that are probably about the same odds as getting a Tet accessory from the Shikatu Luxury Boxes, which means don't bet on it. And yeah, it's a pretty fun piece of content, it's brand new, and it's actually pretty exciting to look forward to Black Desert's future if stuff like this continues to be released. Because for a long time, Black Desert has kind of felt like a solo game, where you occasionally come together to interact with other players, mostly to kill them in Node Wars, before parting again to sort of uh, compare gear and uh, yell at each other in server chat. So the fact that they're adding more cooperative content, more content where you get to party up with other players and actually receive full rewards while in a party, is a great sign of what's to come, and I'm hopeful that the Altar of Blood is just the first of many exciting new pieces of content in Black Desert. I'm sure there will be more upcoming videos about the Altar of Blood, probably from other YouTubers, but maybe from me, about optimal tactics, optimal team comps, um, how you should approach each different level and stuff. But for now, this is how you unlock the Altar of Blood. These are some basic tactics. Um, hope you enjoyed the video. Subscribe if you liked it, and as always, guys, have a good one.